Well, <laughs> uh, thank you for the birthday wishes. It's a little far off, but um, really appreciate uh, you having us here today and um, for an opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, red dust and the work we're doing in uh, remote Indigenous communities. Uh, red dust, uh, what do we do? We, we deliver health programs into, into remote communities. And um, it was all started by, by this gentleman here, John Van Groningen. Um, who lived in a remote community um, many years ago, in a community called Lajamanu, very remote Northern Territory. Uh, he was a commercial pilot, and then moved to Melbourne, became a chaplain on a professional basketball team. And uh, he, the early days of Red Dust was getting a, a group of uh, mediocre basketballers together and going out bush, talking to kids about what it meant to be an athlete and the decisions we made around that. Uh, it was very uh, ad hoc and... Uh, and, and very loose, uh, and we look at our risk analysis these days and we would shudder to think of the decisions we made back then, um, you know, 20, 25 years ago. But these days, uh, Red Dust has four, four main programs. Our, our staple program is our Healthy Living program, which, which Lara uh, heads up. Curriculum-based delivery into school, um, teaching kids on a range of topics that the community advises us on um, with, with a health focus. Our next program uh, is our Strong Young Women's Program. The, a lot of evidence was brought to our attention over the, over the last few years about the greatest impact in community and where do you focus those efforts? Young women. So we've developed a program uh, really addressing the needs specific for young women and, uh, and just try, and trialling that this year. So we're really excited by that as well. To complement that, we've got a Strong Young Men's Program as well. And, uh, and that really focuses on, on, the, on the individual challenges for young men as, um, to complement the women's program, obviously. The last program, uh, we work in the alcohol and other drug sector. Uh, we've got an alcohol education and community empowerment program based in Alice Springs that works in juvenile justice um, and then in alcohol remand centre as well. Um, so quite a, a diverse kind of range of, of projects that we're involved in and um, delivering that to seven communities um, in the Northern Territory. Role models are a really important part of what we, of what we do. Um, from our origins of, of getting some basketballers out bush to these days um, having health professionals and a range of diverse people with different skills and backgrounds coming into community and helping us to deliver our programs. As a mediocre professional basketballer, um, from, from my start of, of my working life, I was invited by John um, to come out bush I grew up in eastern part of uh, eastern suburbs of Melbourne and had very limited experience with Indigenous Australia. So when I was uh, invited to, to head out to a remote, remote community in Central Australia, I was really excited by the prospect. I knew I'd, I'd learn a lot because I didn't know much. So 20 years ago, we flew up to Alice Springs, jumped in the back of a troop carrier, drove out to a remote community and delivered some, some basketball skill sessions and talked to, to community and kids about the decisions we made. It really opened my eyes to um, the realities of, of the challenges for Indigenous people in remote communities and the poverty that they face and, um, and the lack of real solutions at that time. Um, it also really became an important part of my life as a, as a young professional athlete I'd come to the point quite early on that, uh, that I wasn't going to be the next Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan, um, which is heartbreaking, but, um, but reality. And so I was really looking for something to be a little bit more fulfilling in my sport other than just entertaining people on a Friday or Saturday night. So when I had the opportunity to head out bush and, and, and see community, um, I kind of realised that this was an opportunity to use the skills that I had um, to benefit others in, in a more profound way for myself. So... Um, it really left a, a deep impact on me, and you know, 20 years later, I'm, I'm still here. Okay, thanks, Darren. So I'm going to continue on and tell you how I got involved with Red Dust and a little bit about what we're doing now. Um, my my journey to to find Red Dust, um, I I well, that we run music programs, sports, arts and circus programs out bush. One of the music programs um, actually came in and delivered a leadership program to our Beijing Olympic team before we went over to, to China. Um, and I called or, or found the two um, facilitators afterwards and I said, oh, 
do you, do you work with, with red dust? And I said, how, how do you even know about that? And as somebody that had, um, had wanted to use sport and my main motivation for getting to the elite level was to be able to use my skills and to show others that you can do anything, I'd been doing some research and I wanted to find a not-for-profit organisation or I wanted to found a not-for-profit organisation at that point in Western Sydney that was using sports, music, arts, for health promotion. And, um, and they, they said, yeah, we, we work with red dust. And I said, well, I'd, I'd really like to find out more about that when I get back from the Olympic Games. So I met Darren after I returned home from the Beijing Olympics. And Darren um, said to me, well, we'd love to, for you to come out bush. And I was straight on to him. I've got a business plan. I'd, I'd really like to be rolling out these types of programs in Western Sydney. And he said, have you been to the Northern Territory have you been to a remote community? And I said, no. He said, well, we'll have these discussions when you get back. And uh, th that's, that's really, um, it was a really eye-opening experience for me. I mean, I, I went through the public school education system in um, western suburb Sydney. I certainly didn't have a lot of exposure with um, Aboriginal people. I moved with swimming to northern New South Wales and that's when I started having experience and understanding and starting to understand culture a little bit more. So the coming together of my sporting passion, um, my need and want to, to promote health um, broadly, um, it was a really perfect fit um, for Red Dust. So I started volunteering in 2008 and have been with the organisation ever since. I think um, one of the most life-changing experiences for me in working with Red Dust came about in 2009. Um, just a small story that the community have allowed me to share. Um, we went to a remote com community called Kintor. It's approximately 600 kilometres from Alice Springs, Dirt Road Drive, um, in a community that speaks Pintabee Lurija that we've been working in partnership with for almost 15, 15 years. And uh, we went out there to deliver our Healthy Living Program, school-based health promotion program. Um, myself, Kathy Freeman and Liesl Jones were the role models that were working with community role models and elders to deliver the, le the leadership program in the school. And after we'd finished our program, Irene Nungala, one of the elders in community, came up to Darren and said, I'd really, I'd really like to take the ladies out bush. I'd really like to take them out to a women's ceremony. And um, I mean, Kathy, Kathy is amazing. She had a huge impact on the community. And I think that that was probably the main reason we got this invitation to go out and be involved in a women's ceremony. Um, and, it, and like anything, um, we were in different environment, different culture, having to be really accepting. And for Kathy, she didn't grow up in that environment. So she was a little bit nervous about going, going out bush and being involved in traditional women's ceremony. Um, it was sort of, well, if you go, I'll go, and the ladies would really like us to go. And what an amazing opportunity we have to, to connect with culture. At that point, we didn't realise um, until after we came back that it was the first time that the elders in community had invited anybody outside of that community to be involved in a women's ceremony. So we drove, um, it was probably about half an hour outside of town to Women's Mountains, which is shaped like this. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for obvious reasons, and um, and we um, we sat down. Some of the elders were there, and they'd prepared and were preparing. Um, and we sat down in a circle in different skin areas, skin names, and we were given skin names and invited to be part of that community. We took our tops off, which was that was the most scary part actually for Kathy and everybody else. Tops off, and they painted. The, the land and stories and songs onto us and we spent the evening out there celebrating beautiful culture and relationships. And for me, that was absolutely life-changing um, and uh, I, I wanted to be involved in that two-way learning. I, um, and that's what we promote with our programs is bilingual education and two -way, learning two ways, cultural way and um, white fellow way so that people can work together and move forward. And it's, um, it's a real honour and real privilege to be involved. So that's how I transferred my, my skills or, or the reasoning for why I aimed for the elite level um, in sport into what I now love and do. So just to give you a little bit more of an overview of what 
Red Dust does, and Darren did that quite well before. We work um, with Menzies School of Health Research, who are doing our evaluation. Uh, phase one of our evaluation was completed in 2015, and we're about to go into and, um, and work with Menzies Outbush in the next month um, to complete phase two. So the healthy... Is this still working? Here we go. The Healthy Living Program um, is the program that I've been primarily working with. However, we all work together. I'm Alice Springs based. Um, and so we, we work in the areas of personal development, um, which is social emotional wellbeing, nutrition, and that's two way nutrition, working with uh, the Yapa or the Indigenous teacher staff around bush foods and eating the right way in community, but then also education around what's being sold at the shops and sugar focus has, is, um, has come up a number of times this year and is an ongoing focus for us. Physical activity um, and, and why it's important and improving mood with movement as well, so that, that tying in with the social and emotional wellbeing, substance misuse and hygiene. And uh, as I said, the Healthy Living Program does deliver curriculum that um, ticks the boxes for teachers in the school environment, um, but it also um, uses sport um, and depending on what the community wants, basketball, softball, we use circus and arts and dance and music to promote whatever theme it is. So the theme is worked up by the community. Um, we'll speak to the elders first, the clinic, the school and other stakeholders in community to find out what is really specific or do they want an overarching theme for the year. So for example, Kintor, the community that I mentioned before, they're wanting a nutritionalist to be based in Kintor. And so often the theme is around respect and respecting your body and nutrition. That's the really strong theme in Kintor. Um, and once a year we will deliver a health promotion resource. So um, you'll see right at the very end, if you're following this um, infographic around, the health promotion resources that we create in community are community-owned. Um, they are often bilingual and they are a huge, huge hit in community in that all of the kids sing, elders are involved, and those, those songs are then used for behaviour management in the school. It's, you will know, get this part done, we can play the music video again, but also they're, they're played at the community store, they're played at the clinic, and those messages are reinforced and sung by the kids. So long after we're gone, those stories and the songs and messages are still being reinforced, and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see. Um, our alcohol and education community, sorry, our alcohol education and community empowerment program is based in Alice Springs. Um, it's delivered weekly, and then there's men's camps, narrative therapy, yarning men's camps that are held throughout the year as well. So discussing culture and identity, um, alcohol and other drugs education, home and family connections, um, how men can reclaim their place within um, within. Their, their structure and hierarchy, um, and supporting and growing the young people so that men, men know their space again, um, and community solutions. And then the Strong Young Women's Program actually isn't mentioned there because all of, it's a new program that's been rolled out this year. Um, Strong Young Women's Program is being delivered in three schools in Alice Springs, and then similarly to the men's program, there's narrative therapy, yarning, camps that are delivered by health professionals and in combination with elders in community in Yundamu and Kintor. Um, getting towards the end. So I just, um, I, I've been so, so privileged and honoured to, to work with Red Dust to this point um, and, and look forward to working with them for many years in the future. What we, what we do, I think, that makes us unique is that we walk alongside the communities. Um, it's, everything is community driven and we're not after fast, quick solutions. It's one step at a time. Um, we're working on reconciliation as a slow process. Um, yeah, and I think you know, that just that, um, that vision of the hummingbird really sort of resonates with us. We're a small organisation um, facing some, some big challenges that we're trying to add value to um, in, in the context that we work in the remote communities and for the, for the beautiful people we, uh, we serve there. And, um, you know, so we're just, uh, you know, over, overall sort of 70, 80 volunteers and staff sort of um, 
just having a part to play with the skills that we've got to, to add value to, um, uh, to improving the situation in the communities we work with. So um, thank you very much for having us and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.